Mr. James, uh, the title of your Daily 202 today is Blake and Corker Feel Liberated to Speak Their Minds. And that should terrify Trump. Let's talk about why. Yeah, so I think that there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm among Trump supporters. People like Steve Bannon, the former White House chief strategist, kind of saying we got flake scalp. They're, they're kind of very triumphant right now. But I'm not sure that this was the best outcome for the president. The better outcome would have been if Flake actually tried to run for re-election and lost in the primary. Polls, public and private, showed that it was going to be a very tough race for him. And if he had lost and kind of bit his lip until he lost, then came out afterwards and criticized Trump, it wouldn't have packed anywhere near the same punch that it packs right now. It would have seemed like sour grapes from a senator scorned. Instead, Flake is leaving on his own terms and he has a lot of credibility to chastise the president, as does Bob Corker and also John McCain, remember, who was out there so forcefully last week raising concerns about the president as well. But if Flake continues to vote in favor of Trump policies, which is what he's been doing, does all that finger wagging, even if he does it to the last second on the last day of, of his time in the Senate, does all that finger wagging really count for anything? Well, we'll see. Yeah, I, I think the response Jeff Flake would have to that is that he supports the Trump agenda when it's fundamentally conservative, uh, but that he's not going to support things about the president. Uh, and his concern that he's raising is about the president's fitness in office. And you're absolutely right. He, he opens himself up to criticism, you know, for enabling Trump in a lot of ways. Uh, but when it's when it's there's a lot of things that Trump wants that Jeff Flake also wants, like conservative judges on courts. Uh, we'll see what happens with tax reform. I think both Corker and Flake could end up being uh, barriers. They both have traditionally cared a great deal about the national debt. And now that they feel liberated, perhaps they'll speak out if the Republican plan just ends up being big tax cuts for corporations and wealthy people without offsets. But James, on the flip side, you also write that the Trumpists feel triumphant and emboldened, and that Steve Bannon is promising many more to come. Uh, what have you, have you been hearing from that wing of the party about how everything unfolded yesterday? Steve Bannon has threatened this in the past. He, has, he hasn't always been successful, but right. some would suggest that the rise of Donald Trump and the election of Donald Trump may change that. So the, they feel like this is going to scare other senators. Everyone agrees, the Bannon people know, the White House knows that there's probably 20 Republican senators who feel exactly the same way that Jeff Flake and Bob Corker feel, but they're scared to go public. So they'll talk to reporters like me on background when their name's not going to be attached to it, and they'll say, I think Trump's a threat to democracy, but I don't want to be out there because I don't want to get attacked by Trump on Twitter. And so the fact that Jeff Flake announced he wasn't going to run for re-election because he was concerned about losing a primary and having to pander to Trump supporters in a primary, the, the Bannon folks believe that is going to scare a group of other Republicans who might be tempted to come out to now stay silent and to keep their mouths shut and to support the president and his agenda. And, and they may be right. That is sort of the million dollar question going forward. And what we're hearing from Republican leaders in the Hill this morning is that they're really not going to change anything. Both Paul Ryan in the House and Mitch McConnell in the Senate showing that they care way more about getting these tax cuts than about engaging in any kind of discussion about the president's fitness for office. Yeah, well, if, you know, if the applause meter counts for anything while Flake was on the Senate floor, I mean, the, the applause was weak and tepid at But best. the fact that he got applause anyway is some indicator that there are people who actually at least agree with him because that's very rare. In fact, I don't think it happens often that on the Senate floor when a senator is making a speech uh, that they do get applause. And you can correct me if I'm wrong about that, James. But but I find it astounding that you're saying that there are some lawmakers who are, to use your words, scared. It's almost as if they've forgotten that the legislative branch is a co-equal branch of government to the executive branch. It's almost as if they're abdicating their responsibilities to their constituents, to the Constitution of the United States, because they are frightened of the executive branch. In other words, they're frightened of President Trump and his twit and his tweets. Yeah, you're, you, you, I couldn't have said it better myself. What you just said is, is very profound and important. Uh, you know, Jeff Flake, in his 18-minute speech on the floor, which was really a powerful speech for the ages, said that his colleagues should go and read Federalist Paper 51, which was written by 
James Madison, and it talks about the moral imperative and, and really the, the imperative for democracy to survive for members of Congress to forcefully challenge the president, even if they're from the same faction. Qu Flake even quoted Madison and said, ambition counteracts ambition. And I think, you know, he he's having conversations with his colleagues. Flake knows a lot of his colleagues think this, and he's trying to, to get them to, to come out. And uh, I know firsthand from my own reporting, there are a lot of Republicans who are scared and who frankly are abdicating their constitutional responsibility. So listen, you know, the president had a meeting with uh, lawmakers yesterday. He had a lunch. Uh, it was supposed to be to talk about uh, tax reform. The president has been tweeting about it. He basically called it a love fest. He said he got a number of standing ovations. What are you hearing about the outcome of that meeting? Yes, yeah, so I was outside the meeting. It was closed, but I heard, you know, three rounds of applause. But I also remember when Barack Obama went and talked to House Republicans in Baltimore during the first year he was president, and they gave him a standing ovation, too. It's sort of respect for the office of the president. Uh, I think it's kind of silly that the president is fixated on being applauded rather than the substance of the meeting. Uh, interestingly, you know, after right before that lunch yesterday, Trump attacked Bob Corker, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, on Twitter five separate times. He did not mention Corker during the lunch. He spent the first 30 minutes, I'm told by people who were in the room, sort of patting himself on the back, talking about his, you know, quote, accomplishments during his first nine months in office. Then after the first 30 minutes, he pivoted to start talking about tax reform and wanting to get that done. Uh, he really didn't have a, a extended back and forth with Republican senators in the room. Instead, people who were there say it was more of a, a classic Trump monologue, almost like you'd get at a political rally. Well, that's what uh, our colleague, uh, Ed O'Keefe from The Washington Post, suggested. Also, just while you were talking, James, about the applause that President Obama was given out of respect for the office of the presidency, we threw up a picture there that was posted on Pete Souza's Instagram feed. Uh, Pete Souza, as you know, is the former White House photographer. Uh, he has ten tended to troll the president when the president makes these sort of pronouncements. That's a picture, uh, according to the caption, from the uh, U.S. Capitol during President Obama's first year in office. And you can see... Uh, I do see Bob Corker there on the left side of President Obama. Right. Uh, also applauding. Everyone's standing and, standing and applauding. Because yeah. it is the President of the United States. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, James Holman <laughs> of the Washington Post, thank you so much for talking to us, James. My pleasure.